Assad is basically out of options in Syria. He only controls a third of the country, uh, so two-thirds is in control of either the Islamic State or rebel groups. And he only has 18,000 ground troops, which sounds like a lot, but when you're trying to control a, like a big swath of your country, it's, it's really hard. Uh, so he used chemical weapons because it seemed like a sort of easier way to get control of part of the country that he, he doesn't control right now. One really important thing that happened is that Assad allegedly attacked uh, a part of the con his country using sarin gas, which is a banned chemical weapon. In 2013, he said that he had gotten rid of all of his sarin gas, um, so he crossed a sort of bright red line. And Trump responded really viscerally to, to that attack and to the pictures of children. They targeted the airbase because that's where the sarin nerve agent attack was launched. They attacked airplanes, they attacked different kinds of equipment. Early reports suggest that they did a lot of damage. Uh, Syrian media is also reporting that seven civilians were killed, including four children. From what Trump and his administration are saying right now, this is a really low-risk, kind of one-time attack meant to really send a message more than to try to sort of really change the politics on the ground in Syria. This one attack is not going to oust Assad from power. It's not going to sort of change fundamentally control of land or who has control of what. It sends a message, and it seems like even Russia, though they've kind of blustered about it, understand that it's not going to sort of be a recurring thing. And probably Syria tomorrow and next week looks a lot like Syria yesterday.